Question, what's the typical response for a clinician who wants to know more about a colleague's skill level? It's not uncommon to hear a clinician use some version of the phrase, I would trust her to take care of my family. This video was created to introduce you to what is a very interesting way of thinking about both learning and teaching. It describes something called an Entrustable Professional Activity, or EPA. We will cover what an EPA is, why it's important, what's involved in using EPAs during a rotation, and what's trust got to do with it. Here's a multiple choice question. What is an EPA? A, a unit of professional work. B, what's actually done during a clinician's day. C, something that can be assigned, measured, and observed. D, that same something that a supervisor can trust a learner to do independently or unsupervised. E, a way to teach and assess learners, or F, all of the above. It's no surprise that each of these describes an EPA. Let's review some concrete examples. These are some EPAs for nephrology. Assessing and providing an initial plan for investigation and management for patients with hematuria and or proteinuria. Admitting patients to undergo renal transplantation. Establishing a comprehensive treatment plan for patients with AKI. Assessing and managing the care of patients with complex complications of dialysis access. Each EPA is a unit of work and outlines something a nephrologist actually does. You can also imagine a resident being trusted to function independently for each of these activities. And so, it's something on which a learner can be both observed and assessed. Why might an EPA be important in the context of teaching and learning? Two reasons are, one, confirming progress in performing key tasks of our specialty, and two, for feedback. First, let's talk about confirming a resident's progress. In CBD, we want to be sure that each resident can competently perform key tasks. By tracking them, our competency committee will have information to confirm who is making progress as expected and to identify early on if someone needs some more support in a given area. Residents are to achieve and teachers are to ensure that the EPAs are achieved by the end of each stage of training. An EPA represents the integration of a large number of competencies into a manageable number of activities for learners and also for supervising faculty to meaningfully assess during the training program. Remember the other reason? The second one is for feedback. For years, learners have been telling us that they want more meaningful and helpful feedback. Feedback is one of the most effective ways to support a resident's growth and development. The most specific and meaningful feedback is based on observing a specific EPA. So what's trust got to do with it? The more a supervisor observes a learner, the more likely and easier it is to confirm that he or she trusts the learner to perform an act independently or unsupervised. And so, to bring it back to where I began, not just for learners by the end of their training program, but as a general professional aim, shouldn't we all aspire to be a clinician or our colleagues would trust to take care of their family members?